Mm, mellow greetings, everybody. What's going on? My name is James. I am from the internet. And today, now that we're a full day, day and a half removed from the uh, first Biden-Trump debate and sort of the dust has settled and everybody's finished their their analysis of the debate and who might have picked up a point here or lost a point there or, you know, uh, pretty much covering the fact that nobody won and we all lost. And uh, we're now at the part of the show where the really quality satire kicks in. And while I'm normally a fan of satire, it's one of my favorite forms of humor, we're now at the point in the show where satire of the news and the actual news overlap so perfectly that the Venn diagram of the two of those is just one fucking circle. Donald Trump refusing to uh, denounce the Proud Boys and, uh, you know, flipping right on over to, uh, you know, blaming the Antifas. Oh, those dreaded Antifas. You know how horrible they are with their soy and their black sweatsuits. And whew, they are tough, man. Schrodinger's domestic terrorist. Uh, you know, uh, so soft that they're beta cuck soy boy libtards yet. Uh so dangerous that we want to make them domestic terrorists. So of course we leave it to the onion to come up with the best possible title. Stun pundits criticize Trump for refusing to denounce his base. Oh, Oh shit. Oh, I, 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 I think they're trying to say his base is white nationalists. If, if you didn't get that one. Now in the world of satire, that's a pretty good title. But again, we've reached the part of the show where sanity is so far off the edge of the map. It's just in that blank spot that somebody just scrawls here, there be monsters. You know, like like that's where what, what little logic and rational behavior and normality is left. It's like all the way over there, edge of the map. Because, you know, in a normal society, satire is obviously satirical. Uh, when you're off the edge of the map... Satire and, and the news just mystically match each other. You don't believe me? Let me show you something. Rick Santorum says asking Trump to condemn right-wing extremists is unfair because they're his base. His base. Republican former Senator Rick Santorum said that asking President Donald Trump to condemn right-wing extremists during Tuesday night's debate with Joe Biden was unfair because it meant alienating Trump's supporters. Santorum, who in 2012 lost out to Mitt Romney as the Republican nominee for president, appeared on CNN and suggested the debate moderator Chris Wallace set Trump up. Tell me, Rick, tell me what happened. Where he was asking the president to do something that he knows the president doesn't like to do. Which is? Which is say something bad about people who support him, right? What, declining and, violence? It, well, well, talking about... The, the su white supremacy? supremacy? Yeah, the white supremacist, number one. And number two, uh, ask... He, he said the quiet part out loud. Like, like we've all known this. Like it's, you know, to, to people who work in journalism, people on the left, people who work in media, like, we all know Trump's a white nationalist and he doesn't decry white nationalists because he likes the white nationalist support. Like, we know this. This isn't a fucking secret to us. Apparently, there's a whole bunch of fucking Americans to whom this is becoming news. They're like, really? I, 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 I didn't know. I, I had no idea. In 2012, this guy was a hair's breadth away from being the Republican nominee to go up against Barack Obama and his second term, okay? It's fucking Rick Santorum. And on live TV, he's telling people Trump doesn't want to alienate his base, the white nationalists. You know, those people, the ones from the funny story. Yeah, that happened. Ugh. Oh. Quote, the Democrats owe a lot to Chris Wallace, Santorum said. He asked two questions, where he was asking the president to do something he knows the president doesn't like to do. Which is say something bad about white nationalists because they support him. This is insanity. Rather than explicitly condemn the group, which the Southern Poverty Law Center considers a hate group, Trump said its members should, quote, stand back and stand by. Santorum did tell CNN, however, that he thought Biden edged Trump in the overall debate. I don't think it worked for him tonight, he said of Trump, adding, I think he came out way too hot. 
So just how bad is this situation now where satire and reality completely overlap and there are high ranking Republicans coming out on national TV saying that Trump doesn't like to, you know, be mean to his base, which in this instance are white nationalists, which he literally just confirmed on, on television. Um, People are going to want to say that this is a one-off. Oh, Rick Santorum's just bitter. He's just out doing his own thing. You know, oh, he's giving interviews because, you know, he wants to stick it to Trump because, you know, he's no longer the man or whatever, some shit like that. So, just to prove a point that, uh, of course, the dog whistles are also accompanied by full-throated support by the federal government and the current holder of the regime, you know, top spot. Here's this little ditty here. Internal documents show Trump officials were told to make comments sympathetic to Kyle Rittenhouse. In prepping DHS officials for questions about Rittenhouse, the document suggests they say he took a gun to Kenosha, quote, to help defend small business owners. That's right. The Department of Homeland Security was prepped and told to be sympathetic to a 17-year-old patriot who shot a whole bunch of people and then walked right by the cops and the cops didn't arrest. Yeah, just in case you were wondering, you know, uh, is everybody overreacting to Trump supporting the Proud Boys and telling him to, you know, sit tight? And yes, I know that Kaylee McAnany came out and had a press conference to try to stick the toothpaste back in the tube, but it doesn't work that way, Okay. You can't just stick the white nationalist toothpaste back in the tube, okay? Once you go and shoot that shit out, it's out there. It's That's it. Like, that's a one-way trip. Like, sorry, Kaylee. <sighs> so let's see how the, the current regime is explaining to their officials to, uh, you know, really prop up those patriots who, who shoot protesters. Uh, you know, because we're at the ideological warfare point of the pre-fascist show. So let's enjoy. Uh, federal law enforcement officials were directed to make public comments sympathetic to Kyle Rittenhouse, the teenager charged with fatally shooting two protesters in Kenosha, Wisconsin, according to an internal Department of Homeland Security talking points uh, memo obtained by NBC News. In preparing Homeland Security officials for questions about Rittenhouse from the media, the document suggests that they note, quote, he took his rifle to the scene of the rioting to help defend small business owners. Another set of talking points distributed to Homeland Security officials said the media were incorrectly labeling the group Patriot Prayer as racists after clashes erupted between the group and protesters in Portland, Oregon. It's unclear whether any of the talking points originated at the White House or within the DHS press office. Rittenhouse 17 supported Trump and police on his social media pages before he traveled from his home in Antioch, Illinois, to Kenosha with an AR-15. Keeping in mind, he's 17 years old, and uh, you have to be 18 to open carry in the state of Wisconsin. So, of course, Trump, the law and order president, wants uh, his government to support the patriot who broke both that law and the order of uh, it being uh, a curfewed area. So Rittenhouse just stuck his finger up at law and order, but Trump, the law and order president and head of the current regime, told his people to go out and just explain that he was being patriotic and doing his duty because the law and order president actually doesn't care about law and order. He just cares about stoking the flames of white nationalism because that's his base. Rittenhouse was arrested on first-degree murder charges and is fighting extradition to Wisconsin. His attorneys argue that he was acting in self-defense. Yes, of course, you always act in self-defense when you drive, you know, 40 miles to another state with a gun you're not legally allowed to carry, and then you get into arguments with people and start shooting. Yeah, that's, let me tell you, self-defense. You, you know what would have been self-defense? Staying home with your rifle and defending yourself. I know, crazy me. Four former Homeland Security officials, two of whom worked for the Republican administration, said it was unusual for law enforcement officials to be instructed to weigh in on a case involving a particular group or individual before investigations had concluded. Quote, 
it is as unprecedented as it is wrong, said former spokesperson for Homeland Security. What strikes me about the talking points is that they didn't call for calm among the public, said Elizabeth Newman, who served DHS Assistant Secretary for Threat Prevention and Security Policy in the Trump administration, a former Trump employee. Even in the early hours after the incident, it was known private militias had self-deployed. They seemed more interested in Rittenhouse's reputation than calling for calm and actual law and order. Again, the current regime is more interested in making their base, white nationalist militias, happy. Because apparently, Trump thinks that's the only vote he needs to bring home the presidency. Now, if you sat through this, and you're sitting around going, oh, James, all he does is, you know, he just exaggerates. Oh, he takes one instance, and he just, you know, James is so dishonest. He's the fake news. I want to remind you, that this is a problem that has been growing for years. It didn't just pop up now. This isn't the only instance of it. And uh, yes, there are tons of white nationalists out there. And there are tons of patriotic militias who are stockpiling weapons and getting ready for the day after the election, uh, you know, regardless of whether it's to celebrate the win or angrily protest the loss. And if you have any questions about how long this movement has been building and how Kyle Rittenhouse is just merely the latest one in a long string of events, Illinois white rabbit white supremacy group shut down by federal authorities. The group calling itself the white rabbit militia from their hideaway south of Metro Chicago uh, was militia men who were stockpiling an arsenal of automatic weapons, bombs, and bullets preparing for a violent revolution against the federal government, according to newly filed court documents. Now, this is a new article of uh, the next step in a long line of legal battles over an incident that happened years ago. And by the way, it's not like these people go away. They just sit in jail and write correspondences to their friends on the outside, and they continue rolling with their plans. It's kind of like the football philosophy of next man up. U.S. law enforcement describes the rural Illinois-based group as, quote, a paramilitary terrorist organization targeting anybody they didn't like or disagree with. Now, again, Donald Trump would have you believe that he is the law and order president. And obviously this happened on his watch because the U.S. law enforcement community are the people who broke up this whole little militia party. So surely Donald Trump is out tweeting about how the law and order president broke up another, you know, white nationalist militia somewhere that was about to, I don't know, commit an act of domestic terrorism. Uh, commit terroristic violence against uh, American people. Uh, Do me a favor, gang. Uh, Scroll through Donald Trump's Twitter. I can't because I'm still banned from Twitter for two years now. Um, But take a look at Donald Trump's Twitter and let me know if he made a a big case of, you know, bragged about this being the law and order president, because I would assume being the law and order president that he would want to brag about stopping a domestic terrorist incident before it happened and claim tons of American lives. So do me a favor, go go check his Twitter, let me know. I'm already pretty sure he didn't mention it, but please go ahead, go look for it. Michael Harry is the accused leader of white rabbits. According to federal agents, the 49-year-old is from downstate Clarence and is charged with leading a posse of heavily armed central Illinois militiamen to a Minnesota mosque. As the Muslim faithful gathered at sunrise for morning prayers, Harry and his gang are said to have detonated a 10-pound black powder pipe bomb, causing extensive blast damage, according to the court filing. Quote, all because Harry and his men hated Islam and wanted Muslims out of the United States. All but Harry have pled guilty already. Harry is due to stand trial in Minneapolis on November 2nd. New photos from prosecutors show the Illinois militia's tactical gear, complete with their juvenile logo, quote, Ain't no fun when the rabbit got the gun. You know, the white rabbit. Harry's accused of backing up his words with weaponry, according to the authorities. Uh, He was found to have explosives, fully automatic rifles, and communication equipment intended to jam cell phone signals. And all of this happened in 2017 and early 2018. And the government had given up on the investigation, and the only reason why they went back into it is because they got an anonymous tip to another bomb that was planted at an abortion clinic. And that one was a botched bombing attempt, but that allowed them to tie it to the other bombing attempt. So, there you go. 
if Trump is truly the law and order president and he doesn't back up white nationalist militias, then I am going to say that he's on his social media bragging about this amazing bust and this turn of events in stopping a domestic terrorist attack. If he doesn't, then yes, I am just left to assume that this satirical title is actually 100% dead balls on point. One month left, people.